Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan, and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint fall greetings with acrylics on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. I'm going to go over materials that we'll need for this painting. We will be utilizing a T-square ruler and a pencil to help us with the drying of the mailbox. There are two brushes for this. So these are the Princeton Velvet Touch brushes, three quarter inch flat wash and a number four round brush. I will be using a black Polska paint pen for the fall greetings lettering on the envelope. And you can also use this to outline some of the other things in the painting that might need to help stand out. There are nine paint colors in this. So we'll be using titanium white, Hooker's green hue permanent, light olive green. So if you don't have this light olive green, you can mix yellow oxide into the, the hooker's green and add some white into it. And that'll give you that kind of greenish gold color or just use any light green you have available. Naphthol crimson, again, use whatever red you have available. Cad orange hue, burnt sienna, Mars black, cad yellow medium hue, and then also not pictured, we'll be using light blue permanent. Let's go ahead and get started. I have an 11 by 14 inch canvas placed in a vertical format. If you don't have this size, you can use whatever size you wanna paint on and a three quarter flat brush. So I have four colors loaded on my paint palette. Light blue permanent, light olive green, titanium white, poker's green here. So I'm gonna call it light blue, light green, white, and dark green. Let's load our brush into the water, kind of tap it dry. So we're gonna paint the sky and grass, and that's gonna be the first layer of our painting, the background layer. And we're gonna keep this kind of simple because there's so many details in the foreground of this painting. We don't need a super detailed background. So let's start with just our blue. We're gonna start at the top. I'm gonna do these big sort of expressive paint strokes. So I do this a lot with my paintings that have a blue sky in it. Um, to get this kind of like textured effect, I do these big paint strokes that are going in different angles and it just gives it that little touch of um, texture in the sky, makes it look a little bit interesting versus if we just did left and right strokes with just one color. And so I left kind of the middle part open um, because I want to have this middle part a little bit brighter. That's going to help with the contrast of this painting. It's going to help my mailbox kind of stand out or whatever objects we'll be painting. So I'm adding a little bit extra white right in the center and I'm blending that up into the blue. And I'm not going to blend it all the way because I want to go for this textured effect with this blue and white that blend but don't blend all the way. And I didn't measure this time where I'm going to go all the way down. I'm just going to kind of guess maybe two or three inches of space at the bottom. There's mostly sky in this, but if you look at the final painting, there's um, kind of a the bottom, maybe bottom third of the painting is grass, greeny, green area. But I want to make this go down a little bit lower than where my grass is actually going to go to because my grass is going to overlap part of this bottom part of the sky. So as I work my way towards the bottom, I'm going to add a little bit more white to my brush and blend more white towards the bottom so it's all light colored on the bottom. So we have about a two to three inch gap of space on the bottom. Without rinsing your brush, grab your light green and let's start at the bottom. This time, we're gonna do big paint strokes going left and right, but we wanna kind of curve this area downwards. So it's gonna be, um, see how it's curving downwards? And I'm just gonna fill this area maybe about two inches of that area with this light green. Then without rinsing your brush, grab your dark green. We want our grassy area to be darker on the bottom and that's going to help our pumpkin stand out later with this dark. So dark on the bottom, light on the top. So grab some more of your light green and let's blend it. So we wanna create this sort of gradient of light green that blends down to the dark green. When you get to about right here, 
maybe about four inches from the bottom of the canvas. Again, you can just estimate that. Um, grab your white and blend that up. Again, we're doing this curve that's curving downwards. And our sky is very, very, or our grass is very, very light, way in the distance with that blended white. So we have this light green that blends to dark green at the bottom. And then we're just gonna go back with this light green. I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna drag it along that sort of edge, the horizon line that we created. And I want to create this kind of vertical texture right there. It's gonna look like grass. I'm just gonna drag my brush up gently. So this, you don't want a lot of paint on your brush. You wanna just kind of drag mostly that paint that's still there, or maybe only loading a little bit of paint on your brush. But you wanna make that edge kind of jagged and like grass strips. You're just dragging it up and down and it just sort of disappears with the sky. And then you can just paint over that, make your paint strokes down here, go back in a curved direction and go back. Maybe add a little bit more dark green down here and blend that up. So we have a nice pretty gradient of light to dark. And this whole area is, so if you wanna measure like the top of the highest grass blade, it's maybe five inches. So it doesn't go up halfway, it goes up like less than halfway, a third of the way up the canvas. Next, we're gonna let this dry. And after it dries, let's use our ruler and we're gonna start drying out our mailbox. So I'm gonna take my T-square and position it towards the bottom and I wanna make a little mark from the bottom to about right here. This is nine and three quarters. I'm just gonna make a little dot just towards the right side of the canvas, doesn't matter where, but that is how high our mailbox is going to be. If you're doing this on a different canvas, you just wanna kind of estimate and give yourself enough room. So above that line, you have enough room for the bird in this painting. I'm gonna take this and I wanna draw a horizontal line. It doesn't have to go all the way across, but it has to be pretty long. We just wanna use that horizontal line as a guideline. And then I'm going to make another measurement. So I'm gonna take my ruler, I'm gonna place it about four and a half inches below that line I'm estimating, but if you wanna know the exact amount below that top line, it's four and a half inches. And I'm gonna make another mark at eight and a quarter and draw a vertical line. So now I have this um, boxed off area where I'm going to sketch my mailbox. So I am going to next use my pencil to draw the opening of that. So I'm gonna draw an arc over here on the left and I'm using that boxed off area as a guideline not to go outside of that boxed area. If you want to know the height of the opening, it's about four and a quarter high from the middle to the top of the arc, and the width of the opening is about three and a quarter. I have measurements for this entire drawing on the website, so the written instructions of the tutorial link will show you the dimensions of this mailbox. So this line right here that I just erased, I decided I wanted it to go straight to, just to make things simple. It's not gonna make sense in terms of perspective, but it's gonna simplify things. We're just gonna take this line and go all the way straight across. We don't have to make it go at an angle unless you really want to. And then we can sketch the opening of this arc. And we can kind of guess it's at an angle, so it's gonna be kind of an awkward shape. We, might, we can kind of guess the height of it, kind of match it up to the height of the opening. And then my arc ended up going above that initial line a little bit so my mailbox ended up growing by a quarter inch so it's actually 10 inches high instead of nine and three quarters and I'm going to so 10 inches from the bottom edge of the canvas is what it ended up being um, I'm going to do the post so just do two vertical lines down to the bottom edge of the canvas and the width of my post is one and a half inches and there's like a line that goes right down the middle of that 
because there's going to be dark and um, like dark brown and black on the post. You don't have to use the exact dimensions. I throw them out there just to be helpful, but you can estimate. So then after we have our kind of sketch for our mailbox all drawn out, we're going to paint our mailbox in. So we'll be using the three quarter flat and get some fresh white and black on your palette. Let's start by loading our brush in just white, you know, a good chunk of white for this. Let's start at the top and we want to make our paint strokes go curved because our mailbox, see how this is curving? We wanna make it kind of parallel to that arc of the opening of the mailbox. Of course, you can use a straight line on the end edge of it. But the rest is curved. That's gonna give our mailbox form because our paint strokes are gonna go in this direction it's gonna make it look three dimensional. So right now it's all solid white, filling this in. If you find that some of that blue background is still showing through, that's okay. We'll do several layers on this and by the time we're done, we won't see blue sky through the mailbox. I left a little gap on the bottom because this is gonna be dark down here, dark and shadowy. Load a little tiny bit of black on your brush without rinsing it. We want it to be a dark gray, so we want to utilize some of that white that's still on our brush and just a teeny tiny bit of black. I'm just going to drag in an upwards direction. See when I load, I kind of wiped it off because I don't want a lot of black to work with, just little bits of black. Dragging it in an upwards direction and then grab a little bit more white, drag it further up and I'm using this brush to kind of blend this color. I want my paint strokes to still go in that curved direction, but I want my mailbox to be a little bit shadowy on the bottom. I'm gonna go in here with just the black and outline the opening of the mailbox. This part is a dark area. I'm gonna outline this bottom line. I'm going to start filling in this opening. So I'm going to get kind of expressive here. Later on, we're not going to see a lot of this opening because our letter will be overlapping a good majority of it, but we can still paint it as if there's no letter in it. Um, our opening is going to be much darker towards the right side of the, that arc shape and a little bit lighter towards the left. So I wanna make sure I'm adding a little bit more black on the right side. And then to blend, I'm doing these kind of angled paint strokes. It's a little bit lighter and more, um, it's like expressive style painting, blending, and I'm not gonna blend it all the way. So with the opening part, that's gonna be dark. I'm gonna kind of outline it with the black, but then I'm gonna take the white and kind of fill that in. Outline the shape and then fill it in with kind of these expressive full width angled paint strokes. So it's kind of a dark gray color. And a little bit more white. I am going to want to lighten this up a little bit more. I um, took the white, did this angle, it's going to look like an awkward, not really too perspective mailbox, but there's my opening. So I did that little line there. That's going to end up being covered up by my letter later, but it's still fun to kind of paint to that as if there's no letter in there right now. So this bottom part is a little bit lighter than the opening part. I'm taking white right now and just kind of outlining that opening, outline this bottom. I'm going to go back and kind of blend the bottom. And I'm going to let this kind of be and dry for now. I can work the colors in the mailbox later, but right now let's let this dry. And I'm going to go and paint the post. And this is the color Burnt Sienna. Burnt Sienna. I'm going to call it dark brown. And without rinsing the brush, Unless your brush is just super overloaded, you can rinse or wipe it off. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna paint using the full width of the brush. I'm gonna drag down and define the shape 
of this vertical post. And you might find that some of the grays on your brush are kind of mingling with this brown now, and that's okay. It gives it some really pretty color variation. I'm gonna take my black, and I want my post to be really dark on the right side and just a little bit lighter on the left. So that's kind of why we did that vertical line down the middle so we can kind of blend dark on the right, kind of light on the left. But if you look at the final version, it ends up just being completely dark post all throughout. Just took a little bit of black and outlined that bottom part. Make, make sure the bottom of that mailbox is nice and defined and none of that post is going over it. And just kind of drag little bits of black in a vertical, for, vertical direction down, kind of gently blend with the dark brown. And I'm going to rinse my brush. So that, now that my mailbox has dried a little bit, I'm going to go back and kind of work it a little bit more. So rinse the brush, grab the white. I want my opening to be a little bit lighter. I'm going to take my white, just kind of go in this area, kind of blend it a little bit with that color. It's still kind of a little bit wet, but basically I'm adding a second coat to the opening of the mailbox and just making it slightly lighter. And take my black I'm going to outline this bottom edge so this bottom opening of the edge and then to the right it's a little bit darker and because it's deeper in the mailbox it's more shadowy so it shows up darker on the right side and then rinse I'm going to grab just the white and I'm going to outline this top edge so the very very top of the mailbox is bright white and then here's my curved strokes again. I'm using the full width of the brush to curve down. And that is allowing the very top of the mailbox to be nice, bright, and white. And you have shadow colors on the bottom. Outline this. And maybe outline this. And then Maybe go back over that line with white. So I'm gonna let my mailbox be and move on to some of the other elements in this painting, including the pumpkins. Pumpkins are a big part of this because it's a fall theme painting. And I'm gonna set my three quarter flat brush down and get some fresh white on my palette and use the number four round brush. So often when I do pumpkins, I like to do the first layer white so that my orange and yellows will show up nice and bright. So let's paint an oval for the middle part of the pumpkin. And we're gonna do, I call these pumpkin bumps. And so I'm gonna do the second one, starting on the right of the oval, I'm gonna stroke down to create this kind of curved shape that goes around that middle one. And I'm going to do the opposite on the left side, curved down. So again, we don't see the bottom of the pumpkin. We just see the mostly the top part. I'm going to fit one more over here. You might be able to fit another one on the left, but mine just kind of goes off the edge of the canvas. So we only see four pumpkin bumps. And it's important to know that if you still see the dark green behind it, that's okay. And you still see like a dark green line in between each of the pumpkin bumps and that was done on purpose. I'm actually drying this area right here with a hair dryer really quick because, I'm gonna dry this one too, because I want that post to be dry because I'm gonna do a pumpkin that's overlapping that post in that area. So if it's wet, that's not gonna work very well. I'm gonna take my round brush and my white and do another pumpkin. So again, start with your middle oval. Just kind of form it, stroking downwards. And then do your curve and your right curve. So we have three bumps that we see, four, you're curving down. So we have a pumpkin that's kind of going at an angle. I'm gonna load my paint palette with orange, cad orange hue, and then I'm also gonna paint another pumpkin in the middle. So there's my orange. And then I'll take my white and do one more pumpkin. 
these are all relatively the same size, but if you want to kind of vary the heights and sizes and even the colors of these pumpkins, you can. So there's my middle oval. And then you're just curving and stroking downwards for each of the pumpkin bumps. So I'm going to start filling this one in. This one over here on the left, I already dried. So you want to make sure it's mostly dry. If there's still a little bit of white, that's okay. But I just went ahead and painted the middle oval piece with the orange. And I'm going to load yellow onto my palette. This is cadmium yellow medium hue. And I'm going to utilize this yellow to kind of create some color variation in my orange. So if I painted all the pumpkin the same solid orange. We wouldn't really get some pretty texture out of this. But I'm going to take this yellow and orange and paint the right bump and the left bump in a curved downward direction. So the trick is to, is to just create color variation in each of the pumpkin bumps so they stand out from each other. And we can go back and well, we can highlight that later. I'm gonna do the next pumpkin over here on the right. This is yellow, mostly yellow with a little bit of orange. And then the bump on the right and the left are slightly darker, so they stand out. This one, I'm gonna take my yellow again and do yellow. Do the same thing over here, paint the middle, and then go on the right, stroking down with the orange altering that color that's next to it so that it stands out. Over here on the left, same thing. I'm just adding a little bit of yellow to some of that orange and maybe adding just a teeny bit of orange in the middle. And maybe give it another little curved bump over here on the left. So there's the first layer of the pumpkins. We can go back, we'll highlight these, add some more fun, pretty colors to them, but let's let that dry for now. I'm gonna add the stems to my pumpkin next. I'm gonna rinse my round brush off and do brown and black. It's gonna make a very, very dark brown color, pretty much the same color as the post of the mailbox. So mix brown and black together, and then we do the stem. So these stems, It'll be on the top of the pumpkins. Like we got gathered together in the middle. And so it's going to have this kind of scalloped bottom because of the top edging of the pumpkin. And depending on how you painted your pumpkin and where the opening of the mailbox is, you can twist the stem to kind of go around it so it's not overlapping and we can still see the stem. So you might have to twist it to the right or the left depending on where it is. This one, we're gonna do the same thing. Do your wide top of the stem, and it gathers together in the center, and kind of twists in the center. So over here on the right, I'm actually gonna add white into my dark brown because that's not gonna stand out against the post. So I'm making this a lighter color over here so that we can see it better. It's gonna gather and twist. I am going to dry the pumpkin stems really quick and then touch up the orange parts of the pumpkins after these dry. So back to my number four round brush. I'm just gonna get the same colors as these bumps. And so I want these, the top part, that top per curved part, that needs to overlap the stem. So I'm just going back over and having the top parts overlapping slightly. So we need to add a little bit of white in there. 
we could use that to actually kind of highlight the pumpkin. So I'm grabbing that white and just kind of dragging that down in a curved direction. So it's a little bit light at the very, very top of the pumpkin. So I'm going to do the same thing to this one. Curved paint strokes in a downward direction. Touching that top part of that pumpkin up and utilizing that white to kind of highlight the top parts of the pumpkin. So you're just dragging that white in a downward direction. And it's not pure white, it's white that's kind of mixing with the yellow and the orange. Next, I'm going to paint the vines of the pumpkin. So I'm gonna take my round brush in the green and these stems are gonna turn green. So I'm gonna take the green and it's gonna start kind of in the brown area and then it's gonna kind of turn to a curvy sort of vine shape. So it starts at the stem, it goes out, twists around, curves around. So you can make this go in the same direction that I'm doing, or you can change your vines and make them go in different directions. When I get to the post, I'm actually gonna add a little bit of white to my brush to let that green stand out better, but it twists and overlaps the post. Over here on the left, I'm gonna take that, Curve it around and goes off the edge of the canvas. And I'm going to do pumpkin leaves. So we can make these sort of simple. I'm using the light green and the white and maybe a little bit of that dark green. So we can kind of mix dark green, light green, white. Kind of depends on where it is. So this one's got to be darker so it shows up better. So you do a line in the middle and then you just kind of drag paint strokes outwards to kind of form the shape of the leaf. If you want these to be more realistic looking pumpkin leaves, you can make them more realistic. I'm just simplifying them in that sense. Take some of that green, make it go down into the stem a little bit. And we can do some more little curvy, curly pieces with the green. I am going to paint the flowers later. We can add more things down there. But next, I want to get this bird drawn in. So switching gears here back to a pencil and I'm gonna sketch out my black bird that is perched on top of the mailbox. So I'm gonna start with the head. So about Right here, kind of the upper middle part of the sky. Draw a little circle for the head. And next, I'm gonna do the back. So this is going to curve down about right here. And then curve to the right. The neck. It's curving down and the belly swoops down. And so his tail is actually gonna be sticking up at an angle. Erase this part of the circle. So he have his beak, it goes about right here. Kind of elongated triangle shape. And then a little triangle that goes on the inside of the head. Circle for the eye. And then his wing, tail. His tail is actually just kind of sticking up and going pretty close to the edge of the canvas. Body, the belly area swoop down, swoops down. We have our legs. The legs are going at an angle towards the left, so two little diagonal lines, and we can just kind of guess where his feet would be. So there is my basic drawing of a blackbird, and we can go ahead and start painting him in. So I'm gonna load my palette with the color Mars Black, grab the number four round brush, add water to it, grab our black and start painting this in. So I'm just gonna start by doing the, the belly area. Big 
curved area. So I'm going to kind of outline that, but make sure my paint strokes are kind of curving in the shape of the bird. So we'll go up into the head area. You want to do little paint strokes at a time. It's easier to not mess up when you do little paint strokes versus big paint strokes. Curve around the head. So I'm really just kind of defining the shape of my bird. And then here's my wing. We sort of drew that earlier. And then my tail goes off the edge of the canvas like that. Um, we can define the wing a little bit more if we want to see the side wing by using titanium white. And I'll show you how to do that later. But for now, solid black. I know you don't see my paint palette, but all I'm, I'm loading my brush in just black. No other color right now but black. There's the shape of my bird, and I often do not go by my sketch. I go outside the lines, don't fill in all the lines. That's just kind of how it works. And I dry the bird. I really like this small hair dryer. I only use it for painting purposes, but it's the Conair brand. Got it from Amazon. Um, my other one that I used to use for painting purposes was a larger standard size hair dryer. It stopped working. I really like how compact this one is. I could keep it on my painting area and it doesn't take up a lot of space. It's kind of nice. And so I really, I wanted that to be dry so that I can do the beak so that my black wouldn't smudge here. So I'm gonna use white and yellow, orange, kind of a pumpkin color. And then I'm gonna do a little triangle shape. I'm just kind of outline that shape. And it goes inwards a little bit. So it's gonna overlap part of this black part right here, which is why we wanted that to be dry so it wouldn't smudge. I'm gonna grab a little bit more orange on my palette, go back over this, little tiny paint strokes at a time. The beak goes to a point and there's a very, very slight curve on the top of the beak, just a very slight curve. In fact, if you wanna just do it straight, you can, you don't have to curve it. Um, I'm gonna use the same color for the legs and we're gonna be very simplistic with these legs. I'm gonna do just a straight line. This part kind of goes a little bit wider. And then I'll do feet, just painting them as they were drawn. Same with this leg. And I'm only loading my brush in the orange. Doing that leg. It goes a little bit wide at the top. I'm gonna grab black and just at the bottom, did these like two little black bumps that kind of overlap the leg area. And then I said earlier, so if you want to do this, you can, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to kind of outline my wing with white. So I have white. I didn't rinse the brush off. I just grabbed a teeny bit of white on my brush so that this actually shows up more gray than pure white. But I'm just kind of outlining that curved part where the side wing is going to be and just a few kind of loose feather strokes in there. And then I'm going to take my gray. This is like black and white, so it's kind of a, a light gray. I do a, a circle, so it's gonna be kind of where his eye is going to be, but it's more of a gray color. I'm gonna let that dry a little bit, and right here I went back with black to do some more kind of feather strokes with the black. They, they kind of outlined his head a little bit. But I'm just kind of darkening this right here so it's not super bright, but we can still see his side wing. Rinse the brush and grab black. Just a teeny tiny bit of black on the tip of the brush. You can even do this with a toothpick. But you just want a tiny black dot inside the eye. And this part you can also do with a toothpick. I just did a line down the middle of his beak. Then I'm gonna take my black and I'm just gonna kind of outline or redo the shape, touch up the shape of the bird, make sure the head is rounded around the beak as well, outlining. And you may find that you don't need to do this step because you like the way the bird looks. You don't 
have to touch it up if you don't want to, if you don't need to. And down here, redo this edging. Next, I am going to paint the tree. So let's use our brown. I'm going to kind of water this brown down a little bit. It's easier to paint trees when the paint is a little bit loose and helps it to be flowy versus um, not so watered down. Thick paint is harder to work with. So I want to start out with this trunk and I, I'm only loading my brush in the brown. I don't, I know you don't see the palette here, but it's just the brown that I'm grabbing with my brush. And so I have a thicker branch that goes thin. It splits off into two, actually three branches, four little branches. So you have three main branches and then you just kind of split each of the main branches off. To get those very thin branches, you only want to hold very light pressure on the brush and utilize just the tip of the bristles versus if you're um, painting thicker paint strokes, you're pressing harder with the bristles. I grabbed a teeny bit of white on my brush and I'm using that white to kind of lighten the branches. So I'm creating brown and white branches that kind of blend gently together. To create different variations. So here's my palette. I've got the little bit of white mixed with the brown and another little branch. So this this one's thin so I'm using just very light pressure on the very end of the bristles holding it very lightly. I used to tell my students when I taught art in elementary school and we were doing drawing lessons to hold the pencil lightly it should be, I should be able to take the pencil from your hand because that's how lightly you're holding it. There's no hard grip on it. It's kind of how it is with painting. You're holding it lightly. Um, so when we get to the leaves, we're going to do simple dotted leaves. We don't have to go into realistic detail with these leaves, but rinse the brush off and we can use orange, yellow, white if you want to you can even add red to your palette since we'll be using red anyway but all it is is just little dots thick painted dots of different colors on the ends of the branches and i am pressing hard with this to get these thick dotted paint strokes gripping the handle the brush relatively hard and I, I don't want to lose the bird. So I am making my leaves go around the bird so he doesn't get lost in the leaves. And you can even, so some of these dots don't have to be connected to branches. It's okay. They can just be their own thing, clustered, kind of floating there. And we can always paint more branches too if we want more branches to show up around some of our leaves. Do a bundle over here. Next, I am going to paint the flag of the mailbox. So let's load Naphthol Crimson onto our palette. Let's use a clean, dry number four round brush. I'm just going to sketch this out. If you feel more comfortable drawing your flag with a pencil first, you can do that. I'm just going to kind of draw it with the paint. So a diagonal line. If you want the flag to be higher, you can, or a different position, you can kind of decide that. But I didn't want it to inter interfere with where the bird is, so I had it down at kind of a lower angle. So it kind of goes off the edge of the canvas. So there's my solid red flag. We can add outlining and shadow to this if we want. So grabbing black about right here just to do like a little kind of curved part where it's attached to the mailbox and then just kind of loosely outline the bottom edge of the flag. And next I want to get this letter painted in. So rinse the brush. Grab your titanium white. We need some fresh white for this. 
And this is another thing. If you feel more comfortable drawing it with chalk or pencil first, you can, but I'm gonna draw it with paint. So don't let this letter intimidate you too much. It's actually relatively simple. So just kind of sketch this rectangle that goes inside the mailbox, kind of disappears. We don't see the far, far right edge of it. So just kind of outline it with the round brush and then go back with your three quarter flat brush and fill it in and it's going to end up covering that inside part of the mailbox that we painted earlier, but that's okay. It needs to be solid white. If you find that it's blending in too much with your mailbox color, you can change the color of the letter to like a different color. It doesn't have to be a white envelope. I'm going to use black to outline the edging of the envelope very loosely. And then right here, I'm going to take that black and just drag it gently into the white. Because that part is a dark and shadowy part inside the mailbox. So it's very bright white on the left of the letter and shadowy on the right side. Uh, we'll have to let that dry before we can write our fall greetings and paint a stamp on it. I'm going to go back with more white and just kind of give this a second coat over here on the left. Next, I'm going to use the number four round brush to do a little bit of outline work here. And I'm just going to specifically outline this bottom edge of the opening of the mailbox, this bottom line right here. So this gets outlined very loosely. By loose, I mean I'm not outlining the whole thing and my line doesn't really stay consistent. Also, I'm holding the brush very lightly and I outlined the bottom part of the envelope. And that outlining just helped to get things to stand out because the envelope's the same color as the mailbox. Outlining really helped kind of define what, which is which. I'm going to do the flowers next. And so I'm going to paint the center of the flowers with brown and black. So these are going to be very dark brown centers. So I'm just going to take this and do ovals or circles. So the ovals are going to be the flowers that are going to kind of on the side or kind of going at an angle and the circles are if we're seeing the flower directly um, face on. So do as many ovals as you want. I did two very close to each other on the bottom. I will warn you if you do them too close it gets kind of confusing when we do the petals. And then I'll do another one over here to the right of the post. So you can change this, you can put them in different positions, add more, add less, and let's dry these. So this is a kind of a thick layer of paint, so these actually are going to take a while to dry. I'm going to go ahead and just dry everything at this point. I'm going to do something to my pumpkins really quick. So I'm going to take my brown and actually the lines in between, I'm actually going to just kind of outline that line between my pumpkin curves um, from the top and then stroking down. I didn't go all the way down, just kind of partially down. So that really helps to give that kind of shadowing in between some of the pumpkin bumps. Next, I'm going to do the petals. So assuming these oval slash circles are dry. So I debated for the longest time if I was going to leave these white like daisies or do them yellow like sunflowers, ultimately yellow one. So you can kind of decide if you want to leave them white or do yellow. Basically, I'm just doing petal shapes with the white and the round brush all around each of these ovals. And you may end up losing your shape of the oval. We can always go back and redo them. So I'm basically starting from the 
the center and just stroking outward. So I do them in like two or three strokes to fill in the shape. So curve one direction, curve the other. These are very messy abstract flowers. If you want to do more real realistic flowers, you can. This one, they're gonna be competing with each other because they're so close together. So we'll just kind of decide where these petals are for now. We can decide later when uh, we paint yellow over the white, which I'm doing white first so that if when I do the yellow, it'll show up better versus if I just did yellow first, yellow's too translucent of a color. It's gonna be too see-through. So here's my yellow. And take this and it actually works to double load so if you want to do a double load paint stroke so you load your brush in yellow and white and that'll actually create kind of like a light yellow color versus if you want it to be more of that pure yellow color you'll just wait for the, the white to dry a little bit and then go back over with your yellow and so it shows up brighter so that's what I'm doing here I'm just going back over the petals with the yellow. If we want, we could leave some of the flowers white, do white and yellow flowers. Right here, I'm going back over my center piece with the dark brown and just going back in like little dots. Kind of give it that sunflower effect with the textured center. Rinse the brush, go back to white. I'm doing a second coat on this one. I was not really in a painting flower mood, so my flowers in this are kind of messy, but that's okay. Sometimes it's best to look at the overall picture of the painting and not focus on some of the small details. So then let's do red berries, which is also optional. You don't have to do berries. You can do red flowers or red poppies if you want. So I'm just doing little red circles kind of in different clusters around the pumpkins, wherever there's an opening. And these berries are going to be attached to little stems as well. Just solid red. Next, I'm gonna paint the little stems. And you can actually do this with a paint pen because these lines are so thin. I'm doing black and brown. So I'm just doing wherever it can show up. So most of these little stems don't really show, but there's a few of them. They're just kind of branching out and connecting to the berries. Do another set right here. Then I'm gonna go back over my flowers. This one's gonna get a second coat of white to kind of brighten it a little bit better. Grab more yellow and then go back over this with yellow. Just painting over my white. I'm gonna rinse the brush and use white to add little textured white dots in the center of each of the flowers. So this is gonna go over the brown parts. So right here, just in the center, little white dots. I'm going to rinse and go and do some more leaf detail work. So with the green and the light green, I'm just going to go back over and maybe white, go back over some of these pumpkin leaves. I 
paint some more curly pieces. So if you don't want to get this elaborate, you don't have to. Maybe there's a piece that's winding around the post of the mailbox. So if you're doing your green over some of the darker areas, you can utilize your light green and white to get that green to stand out and be brighter. Versus if you're doing green over a lighter background, you can use darker green to get that to stand out. Right here, I am just taking white and highlighting the left side of each of the berries. So I'm doing one tiny white curve on each of the red circles. You may want to dry it if it's blending too much with the red, but my red was for the most part dry. I'm going to next go back over the petals that are still white. Just go back over there with yellow. Just kind of dragging that yellow over the white that's already there. And it should show up bright because we have a white layer below it, so that yellow should be nice and bright. So next I'm going to use the black Posca paint pen to write fall greetings on the letter. You want to make sure your letter is all the way dry before doing this. So I'm just going to do this in cursive. If you want, you can write it out in pencil first to make sure your letters fit in there. You can also change the wording of this. You don't have to have it say fall greetings. I'm going to paint the red stamp next. So depending on the position of your envelope, you may or may not see the upper kind of right area of it. So maybe you only see part of the stamp or none of the stamp. You also don't have to paint a stamp. You could do like, I don't know, a little pumpkin on the envelope if you want to do it that way. Well, I'm going to do red with the, the number four round brush. So I just painted a really simple kind of square. And then on the edge, I'm gonna do these little kind of curved sort of paint strokes along the perimeter of that square. And then rinse the brush and grab some titanium white. And then in the center, and then just make the center of that white. Then I'm going to rinse the brush, dry it, and I'm going to do some fall leaf details on the mailbox. So there's going to be a little sort of orange leaf right here. So this is just the orange, and I'm just kind of sketching the shape of the leaf. It's like a rounded, pointed leaf with the stem that goes kind of behind the flag. And... We can utilize our yellow, add some yellow into that. So I'm just doing leaves that are kind of, they kind of fell and landed somewhere on the mailbox. So this one's going to be like a maple leaf. Um, in the darker areas, you'll want to add a little bit more white to your brush just so that can stand out. So this one I'm doing white with some yellow. So I did the, the middle kind of line for the stem first and just kind of abstractly dragged some of the notches of the leaf outwards in like a pointed direction. So there's like these little pointed pieces kind of going outwards. And this one, we can just do another rounded pointed leaf that's going behind the letter. And then maybe we can take some of this red Blend some of this red in with the orange, but not blend it all the way. Maybe add some red to some of the other leaves. So we have this like really pretty variation of orange and red on each of the leaves. And let's see, we can do maybe an oak leaf right here. So the oak leaf, we have the center line, and then they just kind of have these rounded edges. Okay. 
And then we can do the lines on the leaves. So the stem, I can use brown and go right down the middle. So because this paint is wet, this brown is meshing too much. So if I do these lines, it's not really gonna show up. But the stem will show up. We can do this line down the middle. But we can take the hair dryer and dry it really quick. And then we can do the line details. So I can take maybe more of the black this time and then just do line down the middle and then do little curved lines going outwards. You also don't have to do the line details on the leaves if you don't want to. Line down the middle, lines going outwards, line down the middle, and then the veins going outwards. I am going to do some more fall leaves in my tree. Kind of fill this up. You don't have to do this. And also we have red on our palette, so we can do some red leaves. If you look at the final version of this, you can see that there's more branches. I'm not gonna show it on camera, but I did go back and do more branches, basically just with the brown and you're just doing more branch pieces that are kind of in between some of the leaves. Um, also an optional step. But this is the conclusion of how to paint fall greetings. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.